In this video, I'm going to give you the general steps to follow to host a game server at your home. This will be geared at beginners, and I will get into the steps you need to take, but you'll still have to do some more homework on your own to find more detailed info on each of these steps. That's because each game is different and your hardware and network will be different. Use this video as a starting point, and if I get enough interest, I may release a more detailed guide on a specific game in the future. I've hosted my own servers for 20 years now. You can probably hear the server noise in the background as I'm speaking. It's not as hard as it sounds, but it does take patience, perseverance, and determination because you will run into unforeseen snags. It's very rare that I'm able to get a game server up and running without some weird error message that I have to troubleshoot or an undocumented step that's missing from the server setup guide that I'm using. Server setup guides on the internet are a dime a dozen and they mean well. But because of the wide variety of server hardware and networks and operating systems, it's almost impossible for a guide to cover every possible scenario. And even if it did, it would be out of date within six months or less. So use them as a good source of information, but don't be surprised if you still have to figure out some steps on your own. Anyway, without further ado, the first thing you need to do is get some dedicated hardware to host the server. I'm not going to talk too much about this step because I have an entire video on this subject that you can check out by clicking the link in the top right corner of your screen. But you don't need some expensive, super powerful rig to run most games. An old PC or a used surplus server will do great. In this video, I'll be using a used HP server that I got from a surplus dealer. After you have a machine to install everything on, the second step is to install an operating system. For this, you'll need to choose between Windows and Linux. Since this video is for beginners, I will show the steps based on Windows. As of the date of this video, you should be using Windows 10, as Windows 11 is too new and may have some compatibility issues, and older operating systems will not be supported by Microsoft. Use whatever version you have a license for. It doesn't need to be an actual server OS. Here you can see I have installed a fresh copy of Windows 10 Home on my hardware. Make sure you also get all the available Windows updates before you move on. The next step is to download and install the server software. Most game developers will provide a link to the Windows or Linux install files on their official site, but you can also install the server using Steam or other services. This is where using a guide is a good idea as they'll give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to install the server software. In this example, I'm installing a PC game called 7 Days to Die using Steam. The Steam CMD client is a command line version of Steam that makes it very easy to install game files and allows you to do so anonymously without having to log into your personal Steam account. This is important because once the server is installed, most games will not allow your Steam ID to be used to run a game server and play the game at the same time. After the software is installed, you need to configure it the way you want it. I won't cover that in detail in this video. Again, your needs and situation will be different than mine. But here you can see me editing the configuration files with the settings that I want on my 7 Days to Die server. The server guide you're following should help you know which files to edit and what settings do what. You can also install mods on your server, but keep in mind that usually makes the server hardware work a lot harder, especially in games like Minecraft. Always make a backup copy of config files before making permanent changes. Finally, the last step, and probably the most intimidating for most people, is to configure your firewall or router to allow the server to be visible and accessible to the general public. This is called port forwarding. Port forwarding basically tells the router or firewall where the game traffic needs to go in your network. In other words, there will be a port or range of ports that the game server will listen to for connections on, and your router needs to know that. And when it hears a client trying to connect on those ports, it also needs to know where to send that traffic. You can find a guide online that will give you instructions for your make and model of firewall or router. But you'll need to know the IP address of your server hardware so you can plug that information into the router. You can find your IP address by opening up the Windows command prompt and typing ipconfig. And if you're using Windows or many distros of Linux, you'll have to open those same ports on the firewall inside the OS or you can disable it like I do. But keep in mind that may open up your server to security issues. And that's it. Once the router's been configured and the game software is running, you and your friends should see the game if the game has the ability to find public servers. 
but you may have to input the specific IP address and port number of your server. In this case, you need the public IP address of the internet connection and not the same IP address you used in the port forwarding step. You can find your public IP address by going to www.whatismyip.com from inside your home network. In conclusion, the best tip I can give you is don't give up. When you run into a problem or the guide you're using doesn't work, do some more research or start over with a different guide. In my case, with this 7 days to die install, I had to go back and figure out that I needed an update to Microsoft's Visual C++. After about 30 minutes of checking log files and internet searches, I identified the problem and fixed it. If you have general questions that I didn't cover, I'm happy to answer questions in the comments section below. Thanks for watching guys.